turn with me if you like into Psalm 34. We're going to keep praying. The attitude of prayer is not going to stop. We want to listen to the leading and the voice of the Spirit. In doing that, I had, I had planned on being in a total separate uh, place tonight. And God just <clears throat> led me to be somewhere else. So we'll listen to the leading of the Lord. Amen. Father, please finish what you've started. We sense your spirit. We sense the moving, the manifestation, and the operation of your Holy Ghost. God, in 2023, I know that even when I first got saved, Lord, this was so foreign to me. But Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name, help us, Lord. God, it's incredible how we've heard scriptures and things our whole life, and then when it's happening, we don't know what in the world's going on. Your Holy Ghost, Your Holy Ghost, Your Spirit, Ghost, Spirit, Your Spirit, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the life giver, the creator, the healer, the one who forgives and saves. God, You are just so beyond anything that we can comprehend, describe, or imagine. God, I know that this, <laughs> you're here and you love us. You are here to minister, to move, to heal, to restore, to deliver, to unite, to destroy the works of the devil. Please finish what you started. Please anoint me. God, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have any degrees. I have no seminary. I have nothing. I am nothing. I present myself to you in weakness. Please carry me and hold me as a child. Please flow through me. Please anoint my lips, my tongue. Please anoint my ears and my heart. Please flow through me as rivers of living water. I present myself to you. Please finish what you've started. In Jesus' name, everybody said. The Bible says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let me tell you something. When your soul and your spirit, when who you are is boasting in the Lord, I don't know how it all works, but I do know this. My spirit, my soul, and my body, they're all connected. And even before the fall in the garden, we still had human bodies. I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to have human bodies. Let me tell you something. Sometimes people think their praise and their worship is just some private matter going on in the inside. I have news for you. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Well, Branson, this praise thing is just a private thing. Praise and worship can be very private. It can be in your car. It can be any times. It can be all the time. It can be everywhere. But let me tell you something. It is absolutely something that when we assemble the assembly, the sanctuary, the body of Christ, these precious living stones, you're a holy people, a holy nation. You're called to proclaim the excellencies, to proclaim who He is to this lost and dying world. Your life, all that you are, ought to proclaim of the glory of His excellence, of His majesty to a lost and dying world, to a lost and dying Winfield. And here the psalmist gives an invitation, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Those stones there on the wall, they don't have their own thing going on. 
That's something I've seen in Winfield a lot, and even the so-called Christians approve of in this city. Oh, they've got their own thing, the fivefold ministry. Yeah, sure. Show me where somebody in the New Testament has their own thing going on. It doesn't exist. It's not there. You don't have your own thing going on. We're precious stones being built up together. He's the builder. It's His church. If you're not a part of His church, of His bride, you're not a part of Him. He'll say to you on that day, not my will, uh, nevertheless, not my will. He'll say, your will be done. Depart from me, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. What's lawlessness? Anything that opposes and goes against the instructions and the order and the organization that He has given. Let us exalt His name together. We're made to be together. We are the ecclesia. We are the assembly. We are the called out. We are the church. We are the body. We are the bride of Christ. To step outside of that order is arrogance. It's pride. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord, thank God, and he answered me, thank God. Don't forget this simple truth. You can pray and he'll answer. You can pray and he'll speak. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I was reading the scriptures earlier off my phone. I came up here today, I was praying, and I walked back into the classrooms. I was walking around and turning on the air conditioners all over the building. I walk into the kids' class and it ministered to me. They got scriptures all over the walls. Psalm 56, three, when I'm afraid when I'm afraid. You get afraid sometimes? Yeah. When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in thee. That's the answer for when you're afraid. That's the answer for when you don't know what's going on. I looked up and I thought, thank God for our children's church. God bless and anoint and minister and move to these young kids. God, let your word go forth. They're not just back there babysitting. They are a little bit, but they're sowing the word of God into them kids' lives. They're sowing something that's eternal. You know everything that you do that's eternal. Did you know it's eternal? It sounded simple, didn't it? Everything that you've ever done that was an eternal work is never over with. It lives on. I sought the Lord, He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Those who look to Him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The devil is doing, Mitch, all that he can to get you to not look to Him and be radiant. The enemy wants us to be ashamed. The enemy is a bully and a liar. The enemy wants us like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to shut up and bow down. We won't. The darkness hates the light. Mitch, they're going to accuse us and say mean things. Who wants to be called a bigot? Who wants to be called a cult leader? Who wants to be called a, a pedophile? Who wants to be called racist? Who wants to be called intolerant and unloving? Those are the words they're gonna throw at us, Mitch. 
their darts. Their darts coming from the darkness to try and make us ashamed. You know what the whole ploy is? The whole ploy from the darkness is to get us to be afraid, to be quiet, and to shut up. We won't. We cannot give in to fear. The church has given in to fear far too long. The church has given in to the wiles of the devil. We've given in to the fears of the enemy far too long. It says those who look to him are radiant. Mitch, you just keep looking to him and being radiant. Oh, uh, listen to the word of God tonight from Peter. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 12. Beloved, child of God, listen, God's talking to you now. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Don't wonder what's going on. Jesus said in another place in John and in Matthew, Jesus said, I've told you these things. These things I've told you so that you don't stumble. If the world hated me, they're going to hate you. This is the teachings of Christ. This is the teachings of Jesus. He says, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Division of families and homes. Separation. What, what are you talking about? Listen, that's not, the, the goal is not to go find war and contentiousness. That's not the goal. The goal is to stand and speak the truth in love. And when you do that, God's way, the world will hate you Jesus said, you will be hated by all for my name's sake. How much more? Don't forget, they killed and murdered him and hung him on a cross. How much more are they going to do that to you and I? We mean how much more? They're going to hate us more. He was innocent. I'm not. I thank God for I have his imputed righteousness. Don't be surprised at this trial. Mitch, I'm going to tell you something. If this trial ain't coming your way, I'm probably going to question if you're, I'm going to probably question if you're even saved or shining the light. Why? Because I know that people are seeking him. Those who look to him are radiant. But rejoice. Listen to this. God's got another word for us, Mitch. But rejoice. Boy, I forget this sometimes. You know, we have flesh. Sometimes my old flesh wants to, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, okay, you want to talk to me and my family this way? Oh, okay, I'm going to knock you out. Well, that's sin and that's wrong. That's pride, it's flesh, it's sin, it's arrogance. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Tune in, tone down, sweeten up. See, that's why we have to die unto self. The anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Humble yourself. Pray for your enemies. Bless those who persecute you. But rejoice, 1 Peter 4, 13. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. You share Christ's sufferings that you also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the Spirit of glory and God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Boy, I didn't even plan on being in these scriptures tonight. And that verse where I just preached, where I just fled here, just connected. See, that's the Spirit of God. I promise you, everybody look around here, I'm not smart enough to do that kind of stuff. Praise God, amen. 
I thank God for the, you know what? I thank God for the talents and my inability, my the talents that I don't have. I thank God for the inabilities. I thank God for the weakness. And Paul said, boy, I'm going to boast in him even more because when I'm weak, he is strong. If you're weak, start thanking God for your weaknesses and say, glory to God, I don't have it figured out and I'm not good enough. If you were going to amen, that was your moment. That's all right. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. Don't be surprised. Turn to Ephesians 5 quickly, and I'm going to be right back to Psalm 34. Remember, they radiant. Those who look to him are radiant. Don't be surprised. He's told us these things ahead of time so that you wouldn't stumble, so that you'd remember. I know that this, I know that what we have here, I know that what we have here is not modern day um, commercialized church. Uh, we're, we're not the big church in Derby that's got the antennas that goes out all over the place. I know that we're not the commercial. You know what we are? We're the local assembly. And we've got to look at this thing and listen to what he says. Take it personal. Listen, I'm talking to you about the light. Those who look to him are radiant. Don't be surprised at the fiery trial. Listen. Ephesians 5 and verse 7. Therefore, do not become partakers with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Listen, don't forget it's spiritual. And don't forget that they're blinded and we once too were blinded. Don't forget it's spiritual and it's darkness. Don't take it personal. It's Christ inside of you. It's the light that they hate. Therefore, do not be partake, become partakers with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Ma'am, are you looking for somebody? Can we help you? Oh, okay. All right. That's okay. You were looking around and I thought there was a problem and you needed to find somebody. Everybody listen this way. Everybody look right here and pay attention. Let's get back to the word of God. Listen. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. Oh, should we say anything about those works of darkness? Shouldn't we just be quiet and not be contentious? But instead expose them. Take no part in the deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to, uh, to speak of the things that they do in secret. They get so angry and mad when we shine the light, when we look to him and we're radiant. Because the light, it exposes the darkness. Don't be surprised at the trial. Don't be surprised at the trial because it exposes darkness. It exposes their deeds. It exposes sin. They get so angry about it. We just stand and say what God says. They throw those bully things at us, but, but, they're, not, but they're not upset about babies being chopped up. They're not upset about the wickedness and the demonicness of abortion. They don't care about all those people that are transgender. They don't care about them. They don't care that they're hanging themselves. They don't care about the suicide rate. They don't care about anxiety because they're blinded by the evil devil of darkness. They're blinded by the enemy. Don't forget the people aren't the enemy. Pray for them. Because I walked in darkness and so did you. But one day, God sent me to a church and a man preached under the anointing 
and it delivered me and it saved me. We've got to stand. We can't be afraid. Back to Psalm 34. Quickly, those who look to them are radiant in their faces. She'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Some of you are crying tonight. Some of you got tears tonight. I see those tears. Maybe I don't, but God sees him. Listen, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. God's going to deliver you. Bring your troubles to the Lord. Cast your anxieties on him. He cares for you. You're stressing so much about it, you ought to pray more about it than you stress about it. I have to remind myself of this. Pray about it. Say it. Say it. Talk about it. Say it. Play it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints, for those who fear Him have no lack. If there's one thing I can try and disciple and teach every person in this room, if there's one thing I've seen with the Lord about myself that I've noticed that's different than with other people, Take that for what you think. I, if you take that wrong, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm here to please the Lord, not you. Fear the Lord, you His saints. Most people I've just seen don't fear God like I do. Boy, I'd have been fearful. Well, let me just say this. In 2017, for a few years, I felt really betrayed and stabbed in the back. I felt like I'd really been done wrong by people I'd been loyal to and served with for 10, 12 plus years. Guess what Branson did not do? Bring people over to my house and sow that poison of discord in God's church. You know what, Larry, you know what I did? I actually shut my mouth and didn't say a lot to my wife. I had a real fear of God in sowing discord. You say, well, discord, I just wasn't sure. I didn't know, Larry. I'm not saying I have figured out I, I didn't know. I just thought to myself, you don't know. You better just keep your mouth shut because you fear God and don't sow something into your wife. Don't sow something into other people in leadership and ministry. Huh? Because it wasn't Joplin's church. Because I knew, even though I knew that he's a man, I knew the authority from knowing what the Word of God has said, I knew the authority placed on him. And I knew the seriousness of disrupting, of disrupting God's man and his assembly. Boy, if some folks would fear God a little bit more, The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Some of you are wondering, how am I gonna make it? The world's telling you all these other ways. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be added to you. What things? Read the text in Matthew chapter six there, right before, it might be in Matthew five, six or seven. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? God knows you need clothes, food, car. God knows you need to pay your utility bill. God knows those things. Listen to me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and he will add these things. All these things will be added unto you. I'm reading a book that Grant sent me by Pastor Robert Morris from Texas right now. 
Uh, this just blew my mind. This is what he said about tithers. He said, one thing I can tell you about those who tithe is that they can always say, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. They can say, I've always made it. And something that non-tithers always say, always, I don't have enough money to tithe. I wonder why. Come, O oh children. Listen, this is the word of God to you tonight. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life? Are you getting how personal this is? Are you hearing how serious the word of God is right now? Listen up and pay attention. <laughs> I'm gonna start over, listen. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Well, I'm born again, his grace covers. What we do doesn't matter. That's a lie. It's a poisonous lie. What you do matters. Show me your faith apart from your works. James says, the Holy Spirit says, I will show you my faith by my works. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Everybody stand with me all over this room. Pay attention. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near. This is for somebody in here tonight. I don't know who, but I promise you, this is for folks in here right now. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. If you're brokenhearted, if you're crushed in spirit, he says he is near. Many, somebody in the church say many. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mitch, it reminds, I needed this today, Mitch. Many, 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 many. That's a lot. Many. Many are the affliction. Sometimes it's like, well, for, I'm, I'm serving God. How come I'm going through all this? How come uh, this happened, this happened, in the middle of all of this, my garage door done broke, and then this happened. Then it looks like we got this spider bite. I got to deal with this kid getting a pins out of his arm. And then it looks like this. We're not going to be able to pay this bill. We should have waited and done this. And I thought this was coming in. I had to work and do this. Hey, listen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Sometimes the afflictions are coming because you're serving God. You know, Steve, sometimes the enemy just wants to just jump on your shoulder and tell you, oh, oh, well, you should have done this and that. Well, you didn't know. The enemy wants to jump on and question all your decisions from the past. Well, but, hey, many are the afflictions. You know, you know, we think if we're doing God's will, and listen, I thank God, I thank God he opens the door. He makes a way, amen? Sometimes we think, though, that, well, he's going to open the door and make, well, there's just going to be no problem. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches and talks about lots of problems, but many are the afflictions of the righteous, the troubles, the chaos, the storm that the devil threw. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. 
But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Somebody say all. all. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Stay focused on him. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. You be strong and you be very courageous. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. I love the prophecies of the Psalms. Affliction will slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. He redeems the life of his servants. Is that how you view yourself? Micah, for all those years, I'm just gonna be honest with you. A lot of those times, you know, I was ordained, I was anointed, God was using me. You know, it's 2017, when God came down and crushed me and grind me to powder, He was humbling me, telling me, Branson, I don't need you for nothing. It's incredible what happens in ministry and leadership when folks show up and are honored that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that we're able and honored to serve Him in His house. I was thinking about people who serve today. Larry and Myra come up and clean the church weekly. It's a big building. I thought, you know, we could get some folks to help on the cleaning team. We could get some more uh, folks to help the children's church. It's a big lawn. Luke, I got ADT cameras that go off. I know when you guys are up here mowing. I know you didn't tell anybody. I started wondering, how are they paying for gas? My own con only conclusion was, I know that you hadn't asked anybody here for gas, which means that they've been paying for it out of your own pocket. Just you and Luke are doing the whole team. I started thinking about all the opportunity. I started thinking about all the people here that are already serving. Larry, I want to say something about Faith Ignited Church. We're growing. And I want to say this. Nicole, Matt, I don't need you to do any more. You're doing a lot. I've seen all the time and the effort and the work that you put in. Doesn't matter if I see it or not. Doesn't matter if I see you mow the lawn. Doesn't matter if I see you cleaning the toilet. Doesn't matter what I see. We do what we do, me, you, we. I am a servant in the house of God. And I pray that I never forget that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that I lost my place in hell and I've gained a home in heaven. And I am a servant in the house of God. David, I don't need you to do more. Matt, I don't need you to do more. Steve, I don't need you to do more. I'm gonna tell you what Faith Ignited needs because we're growing. We're gonna grow deeper and wider, our roots. I need more people that aren't serving, serving. That's what we need. We need more people that show up and humble themselves and view themselves and say, I am a servant in my master's house. I am honored to hold the door. I have held the door. I've cleaned bathrooms. I've worked in youth ministry and children's ministry weekly. I used to count the money. I've been an usher. I started a security team that didn't exist. I started a college and career class that didn't exist. I've taught, I've preached, I've made sandwiches and food. We've clothed the poor, gone to the other side of the world. I've done all these things to serve my master and it's all done for him we need more folks Jared you do so much for this building I don't need you doing more we need other servants that will humble themselves we need more ambassadors for Christ we need more people looking to him and you're radiant those who look to him are radiant. 
you reflect what you behold. Some of you came in here tonight and you, you reflected stress, you reflected chaos, you reflected depression, You reflect what you behold. Get your eyes off of yourself. Get your eyes off of yourself. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Those who look to him are radiant. The light and the life shines. Jesus said this, mind-blowing, you are the light of the world. Really? Isn't that mind-blowing sometimes? Wait a minute. Well, he's the light of the world. Yeah, well, he's inside of you. Jesus, I'm going to say this. Matthew 5, 14. This is Jesus. You are the light of the world. You are. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Mitch, they want us to put it under the basket and shut up. While they scream tolerance and love. They scream we hate church hypocrites. Show tolerance and love. If you don't agree with us, we'll kill you. <laughs> That's the definition of hypocrisy. but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Father, we praise you and we worship you. God, I thank you for your presence here tonight. God, I really don't even know how to close or what you want to do if we're supposed to do the songs that Matt and uh, Nicole had prepared or just keep praying. But God, I worship you. I worship you. Your word says those who look to you are radiant. Your word says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Please give us courage. Please give us boldness. Help us to stand for you, speaking the truth in love. Help us to stand for you, speaking the truth in love. Help us tune in, tone down, and sweeten up. Help us to stand with your boldness. Help us be filled. Give us your zeal, your urgency, your fervency. Teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Please use us as lights that shine in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Help us to be reminded that people are not the enemy. Help us to pray and bless those who persecute us. Help us, Lord. Lord, I see the callings that your word has even said to men and women in the Bible. Help us not be gossipers. Help us not uh, be ruled by anger. Help us to individually humble ourselves and die unto self. I pray for unity at Faith Ignited. I pray in Jesus' name that you would destroy the works of the devil. I pray that you would unite us like we've never been united. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray and I ask you, that your all-consuming presence, please consume us with your majesty. Consume us with your flames, with your fire. Use us as lamps to burn brightly. Show us and lead us when to speak and when to keep silent. I know that your word teaches I, I'm not to contend and try and argue and fight with those that aren't seeking the truth. We're not to cast our pearls before swine, but then sometimes people are seeking and it can be contentious and we are told to contend for the faith. God, I'm asking you to give us wisdom and discernment. Help us to rest and cease striving. Help us to, while we rest, to cease striving, to be filled with your urgency and with your fervency. Help us to walk with this balance that you've called us to, God. And I know it doesn't come through looking at ourselves. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path. 
Help us live and walk in this spirit world. Help us to see it for what it is. I pray that we would have a burden for the lost. I pray that you would give us hearts to make disciples. I pray that we would grow in correction and instruction. I pray that we would submit to your order, to your way. God, I worship you. God, I worship you. those songs tonight I would like to I'm gonna close and dismiss do you guys still want to sing is that okay or you guys need to get okay I'm gonna close and just dismiss everybody when school starts next week I've got to start letting out sharply at 8 15 um, let the kids get to get to home they gotta start getting baths and food but um, tonight I just wanted to listen to the leading of the Lord and I'm thankful that we did amen I'm gonna close and dismiss if we if you need to go, God bless you. I hope to see you on Sunday. Pray for somebody this week that needs the move of God in their life. Pray for Sunday. I'm excited for Sunday service. There's a lot of things coming up. There's things to sign up. There's a lot of things going on. Check our announcements and look on your app and stay in the know. We're going to do some songs. I'm going to let Matt and Nicole. If you, I would like to ask you, even if you're not leaving, everybody in here that's got teens and kids, it's 8.34 and they plan on me getting out at 8.15. I need you. Even if you're going to plan on staying and worshiping, I'm asking, please, everybody, please go get your kids. You can bring them back in here. And if you need to leave and get home, God bless you. Uh, God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for moving. Thank you for your presence in this place. God bless as we dismiss. Bless everyone tonight. Bless those who go. And uh, uh, just bless everyone as we all leave and go home tonight. God, I just pray in Jesus' name that you'd have your way. I pray that we would love you and love each other. Help us to love you and love one another. And I just pray that you'd bind us together. I pray for your anointing now as Matt and Nicole lead us in some songs and in worship. I just pray for your anointing, your presence on them. God, we praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>